Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another recent reads on Sunday. Yes, on a roll, but I will travel uh, to see my mom um, next week. So there won't be videos the next two Wednesdays, I think. That's what I'm planning anyway. And it's really hot. We are in the middle of our first heat wave here in Europe, at least in, in Germany. So it's uh, around, it's just under 90. Uh, for those in you in Fahrenheit, so around 30, 31 degrees uh, for the Celsius people. Oh, and I'm not yet used to it, I can tell you. And it's humid as hell. <laughs> so sorry for sweating in your face. But anyway, let's talk about books. I finished not that much uh, because I had a really, really heavy workload week. Uh, but teaching is done. Yeah. Uh, now I have to grade the exams uh, when I come back from my mom's. Uh, that will take another week, but then I'm done for the semester. Yes. But Books, 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 books. Uh, the first book that I finished uh, was a buddy read with Heidi from My Reading Life and also a gift from her. And that is a Samuel, the revolutionary Samuel Annas by Stacey Schiff. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a glare, but you will find all the information in, in the description box. You know that. So this is was published in 2023, I think in March. And I said already, um, I highly gifted this to me for no particular reason, <laughs> because she came to Amsterdam and she was happy to see me. So that was really, really nice of her. Um, and we read it uh, together. Um, and um, w when I film this, I will check in just after I film it. So before I upload it, I don't know. I, I'm not even sure why I'm telling you this. Anyway, the book is basically a biography of Samuel Adams. Uh, he was born, uh, what was it, 1723 or 33? No, 23, 1723, and he died 1803. Um, but the bulk of the book is about the years between 1765 and uh, 17. 60s, uh, 1776. So the, the revolutionary years and the, the, the years working its way to the revolution. So his youth and the first 40 years of his life is a really small portion of the book. And after, um, the revolution, it's also, it's just a couple of pages. So it's really focusing on that theme of the revolution. And if you follow my channel, you know that I really loved, uh, I mentioned that uh, last time as well, I really loved Stacey Schiff's biography of uh, Cleopatra. I thought it, that was just brilliant. This I liked, but I didn't love it. But that could also be that I was more interested, I think, in Cleopatra and Egypt at the time and the, uh, the power struggle with Caesar and Mark Antony than I was in the very detailed account of what happened in the years between 1765 and 1776 in the U not yet US, in the British colonies. Um, so, if you, if this is really your thing, you want to know about what happened there in really great detail and very well told, this is the book for you. For me, it was often a little bit too much. Um, you know, I felt lost in the weeds a bit. There is it because it's so detailed. Um, but I learned, I also learned a lot because I think I told you, uh, when I first introduced this book that my knowledge of, um, U.S. American history is, is very sketchy. And certainly the revolutionary years, I didn't know that it took that long, you know, more than a decade of struggle between, um, the, the, the first, the T Act, the first, uh, time that the colonies protested against, you know, no taxation without representation and the actual declaration of independence. And then I didn't also didn't know that the war went on for another couple of years, that the, the treaty, the peace treaty was only signed in 1783. 
like I said, I'm a stupid European. I don't know that much about uh, uh, U.S. Uh, American history. So I learned really a lot. Um, the words that I've heard, like the Boston Massacre and, of course, the Tea Party um, and the various, uh, the Stamp Act. So that that was, for me, certainly interesting, but it was just a bit too detailed, I think. But again, that could also be because the subject interested me, but it wasn't gripping me as much as um, Egyptian history does and the life of Cleopatra does. But if you are in interested in that subject, this is certainly um, a really good book uh, to read. Um, the other book that I finished, and I of course have to look up the publication date as always, some things never change. Yes, 2021 is another non-fiction essay collection not another, but another nonfiction and an essay collection, Janet Winterson, 12 Bites, How We Got There, Where We Might Go Next. Um, this is a collection of about 10 or 20 essays um, uh, where she talks about everything related to a computer and especially artificial intelligence, how, how she... Uh, her research that she did on it, uh, how she feels about artificial intelligence, how, how we got there. So in other words, who, the first people who were uh, inventing um, uh, 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 computerized intelligence. Uh, she talks about a couple of female inventors also, um, a lesson from history. So Lovelace, one of the mathematicians, female mathematicians, who was really um, a big, who was at the beginning of, of the computer. And I find some of the essays really engaging and interesting. The topic is something that I uh, find very um today. Um, so it, it was a good collection. Um, I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't blown away by it that I thought this is the best uh, collection on artificial intelligence or computers that I've ever read in my entire life. I wouldn't say that, but it was a solid good read. So if you are interested in that topic, uh, computers, uh, artificial intelligence, and you like Janet Winterson maybe, I can certainly recommend it, um, but it's it's a very specific topic. So if if I uh, an artificial intelligence uh, AI is not your thing, this will bore you. So, so those are the two books uh, that I finished. I'm still working on um, a, a fiction, Joy Williams, Harrow. Um, I'm reading this, as I told you before, the last time, I'm reading this with Kathleen from Kathleen Ann and Adam uh, from Memento Mori, and I always leave the link to his Instagram page uh, uh, in, in the description because he is still quite active on Instagram with his books. Um, and this was published in 2021. I have not read this author, but she is. Uh, she was born in 1944, and the last novel that she wrote uh, was quite some time ago, The Quick and the Dead. And no, not the movie with Sharon Stone, this kind of Western, uh, but it's also it's a coming of age. Uh, but she wrote um, essays and short stories. It's not that she didn't publish for 12 years, but this is her first novel in a very long time. And it's a dystopian tale um, after some environmental disaster, but not in, in terms of, you know, the bomb going off, but more the gradual deterioration of the world. And at some point, it's just gone, so to speak. Um, and then we follow this teenager, uh, Kristen, uh, who is uh, abandoned uh, by her mom for some reason, we will learn in the book, and she travels to this dilapidated former resort where she meets a, couple, a group of people. So I, I'm i now, I, I have like 50 pages left. It's quite a short thing. It's a, a just under 200 pages. And I loved the first part. I thought it was 
weird in the way that I really like. The author didn't take me for stupid, so she didn't do a lot of, you know, explaining what happened, but we are just thrown into this world uh, together with the main character, Kristen. So I, I really love that. I love the, the humor, the kind of surrealistic humor that she has. Now, two thirds in, she is losing me a little bit, I have to say. We just talked about it um, in the Buddy Read group uh, that we all feel it's kind of fizzling away and it's getting too heavy for me on the message. What I especially appreciated at the beginning of the book is that she is not preachy and not heavy on the message. It, the world is just the way it is and she is showing me people uh, trying to deal with it. So we'll see whether the 50, last 50 will kind of, you know, wrap it up in a way that it's going to lift the book up again to the level that I thought it was in the beginning. Uh, we'll see about that. I will probably finish it uh, this weekend. Yes, because uh, our next check-in is on Monday. Um, another book that is not quite as, mm, no, is the non-fiction a History of East Germany by Katja Hoyer, who is an East Germany born, she was born in the 1980s uh, in East Germany, but she is now living in the um, UK. So she is a British um, historian and scholar, and she wrote this book in English, but it is, of course, available also in the German translation for if you're a German viewer. Um, yeah, it's it's quite a chunker. And I find it, first of all, I don't really like uh, nonfiction when it's all the time using this, um, this instrument, this tool of the personal story. And I don't mean her personal story, but every chapter she starts with some individual who then you know, picks the flowers to give it to the president, the new president of, and they are real people. It's not that she invents them, but I don't need that. I don't need that human interest perpetuated all the time in my nonfiction. I understand that you might uh, use it, certainly in the beginning of a book, to make the reader more engaged and maybe have the book be less abstract or something, but to repeti the repetitiveness of it every single chapter, and I mean small chapter, so sub chapter, so every five pages or seven pages, there's another person whom I don't know and who is illustrating something, a point that she is then making. I, I don't, that's not my kind of thing. Some people are really into that, fine, I'm not. And it's not really, uh, I mean, this book could have, could have been half the size. That's the other thing. Plus, I feel, I, I bought this book uh, because it was supposed to give um, a different look onto uh, East Germany. And um, not an, a nostalgic look, but maybe also not the typical you know, the, the, the point of view that I have as a Westerner, um, I wouldn't want to live there kind of attitude. Um, and that is maybe understandable for, you know, from my point of view, born, being born in the West, but that's not interesting. So I was hoping to get a more nuanced, um, look on life in and politics in East Germany, and that's not what she's doing. I mean, she is quite in the mainstream, uh, you know, uh, Stalin is paranoid and Ulbricht, uh, the first uh, uh, prime minister of the East Germany, is paranoid. And it's like the stuff that I've read in the Western press a million times before. Um, so I, I don't feel that that is really interesting or giving me anything new. I'm about halfway. Uh, and I have to be honest, I'm not sure whether I'm going to finish it. I will have another look uh, at it today. Um, and then I'll see whether I'm 
interested enough to finish it. I, there are bits and pieces of information that are really valuable and that I didn't know and that are interesting, but it's like one piece of info every 20 pages and I have to slog through 20 pages that don't interest me. So we'll see about that. Um, pity, pity though. And then there are two books that I started. Uh, the first one is a short little fiction um, Annie John uh, by Jamaica Kincaid, first published in 1985. <clears throat> and this is for Caribbean. Um, Caribbean started, I think, on the 7th and runs through the 17th of June. If you're interested, just check out uh, Karen's uh, channel, uh, Run Right Reads. Um, she has a whole list of books that she wants to read, but basically it's 10 days in which uh, uh, they want to encourage us because she's organizing, I think, with other people. Uh, but I only remember her as an organizer. Um, anyway, so they want to encourage us to read uh, literature from the Caribbean. And Jamaica Kincaid is from uh, Trinidad, uh, Antigua and Trinidad is it Antigua? Sorry, Antigua. Uh, and uh, so I'm starting this one. It's her, I think, most well-known novel, of a sh like I said, a short little coming of age of this uh, child. She is 10, I think, when the book opens. <clears throat> and we will follow her life from her own account of her life until she is about 17, 18. You know my trepidation and hesitation when it comes to child protagonists, but this is Jamaica Kincaid, so I'm giving it a try. Oh, and by the way, Jamaica Kincaid is also the author spotlight pick for the Book Naturalist uh, Club, so uh, that's probably more the nonfiction side, uh, 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 the small place, for instance, her account of her life uh, or the, the life of the island. Um, is maybe a good pick, but it's author spotlight, so I'm counting this for the Book Naturalist Book Club. And the other book that I've just started uh, is a book that I recently bought and ha hauled in my last haul, and that is um, How to Think Like a Woman by Regan Panna, Panna Luna, Panna Luna, yeah, um, an American, uh, U.S. American writer and scholar, and this she is a philosopher. So if you are Heidi, it's not a book for you because it's about philosophy. If you're not interested in philosophy, this is not for you. But she talks about four uh, philosopher, that's philosopher, female philosophers from the 17th century that she discovered. Um, and I find it interesting because the only one I knew is uh, Mary Wollstonecraft, but Mary Estelle, Catherine Cockburn, and uh, Damarius Cudworth Masham <clears throat> excuse me, I've never heard of. So that sounded interesting. And it's a combination of memoir, how she experienced um, uh, the sexism in that particular field of scholar, uh, scholarly work. And plus, uh, it's about those four women. So I've just started it. So we'll see. Um, this was it. And I didn't even melt. I mean, I'm sweating a little bit, but I didn't even melt. So that's good. Well, this is it for my recent reads on Sundays, and I'm still haven't answered your comments. I'm really, really sorry. Um, I hope uh, that I will be able to next week when I'm on the train, because that's always a good time for me to really sit down. I mean, I'm sitting down anyway, <laughs> and and answer the comments. But yeah, it's like two weeks or something. I'm really sorry. But anyway, I'm still looking forward to your comments. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you all soon in the next one.